This is a very interesting little app that I found online. It creates reflections of your images, but it gives you quite a bit more control than most of them do. It's not something I would use on every image, but it really works well on certain images, and I'll demonstrate some of them. When you load the image, it automatically drops in the reflection. You can just click on the image and move it to control where the reflection appears. Now, this is what the original image looked like. Um, it's low tide, and uh, it, I don't have enough reflection of the boat to really make it work. But with this particular piece of software, when I put it in there, I can bring this up and control exactly how much of that boat reflection I have. So I can make it look like it's high tide, quarter tide, or low tide. It makes no difference. So that, I find this very intriguing. Uh, I'm going to have it so I've got a little of the rock showing and put it about there. Now, there are different types of reflections you can work with over here. We're on, uh, well, I thought we were on water. Oh, yeah, we are on water. Um, and when you're in it, you can click through these presets to get different kinds of reflections. I, liking have, I like to have my old control, so if you click on this little thing here, I can go in and then control the reflections myself and set it up exactly the way I wanted it to look. It even has the ability to put fog in, which I'm not sure how well that's going to work, but there it is. And it has some other features where you can put color in. You can add texture. You can make it look like it's raining. Whoops, where is it raining? Right there. I don't care for any of those. But there are other types of reflections that I use using water. You can have ocean and it puts this thing in. And again, in ocean, if you go to presets, it has all kinds of different setups there. And. Uh, Beach is sort of interesting because it puts in different things in the foreground. I think it's sort of hokey. Ice is interesting because it has a little different set of reflections, which, no, I would probably use this. And then these other ones, I really don't even understand. They're there for if you're doing sci-fi sci or 3D dimension stuff. But the two I would use is water and ice. This is one. This works well. Um, I like the effect. I like how I have a lot of choices with it. Then you can load it back into Photoshop and continue working with it. But the thing I found really interesting about this piece of software is I'm going to load another one. One place where I think this software is really going to be an asset for me is I like incorporating skies into my images and frequently I have water in the bottom half of the image and it's very difficult <coughs> it's very difficult to get some kind of a reflection back in the water to mirror what's in the sky to make it believable that this was there at the time so one thing I've discovered with this piece of software sometimes you have to extend the canvas to get things to work. Now I knew I wanted to have a deeper canvas so I got to have the sky and the water reflection. So when I put it in, this is what I got. That's what automatically came up. Now that's pretty good because you know, if I put this in in a layer or a mask, I can lighten down the bottom half here so it just appears as a slight reflection in the water. And I can move it to change how the sky works or how much of the sky I'm getting. But this is why you have to, oops, it won't do it now. But if you go up too far, the white appears at the bottom. But so this, I think, is going to be a real asset for creating. Because once I do this, I just save this 
and then I have this in my my sky folder I have a folder full of skies that I can use to incorporate into my images I can pull this one out if I happen to have a reflection and I want to have this appear in the water when I put the sky in and I can just put a layer mask on there and reduce the opacity of this so it just becomes a light reflection here is an example of, uh, of an image that I did this with and uh, it, it doesn't really look like I have the reflection but because I, when I did this I did pick up the tonalities of the sky into the water it makes it very believable that this is reflecting into the water. Here is a before and after. This is the original image and this is the image after I applied the cloud overlay and did quite a bit more work on it. But uh, you can see this is a very interesting image but this one's a whole lot more powerful and dynamic. And just the tonalities that I picked up in the reflections down here mirror what's happening at the top. Well, I hope you find this helpful.